What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about saving data in your Swift UI app, specifically with app storage. So here's the app we're going to build. It's a pretty basic form. We've got two text fields and a toggle here. And what we'll see is as we, you know, enter in content, close the app and come back, it'll persist. So we're going to give it a first name of Tim, a last name of Cook, and if you know, you're not a subscriber, you definitely want to be one. So we're going to turn this toggle on uh, just like that. Whoops, looks like I missed it there. There we go. There's a toggle, it's enabled. And we're going to close the app and come back and we'll see all of our data has persisted. So we see Tim Cook and we see our toggle is enabled. And of course, all of this is reactive and in real time. If I go and change that text there and come back, boom, it stays the same. So we'll take a look at doing this with app storage and that property wrapper. So if that all sounds good to you guys, make sure you destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel and into iOS and Swift, welcome, hit subscribe, get Xcode ready, get pumped. Let's talk about some app storage in Swift UI. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and we're gonna call our project app storage in Swift UI. Make sure your language is Swift and both your lifecycle and interface are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue and save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. And first things first, we are going to expand our window, hit resume in our preview to load up our canvas. Takes a few seconds, so just bear with it. I'm also going to add the preview device modifier onto our content view and pass in a iPhone 12 string so we can have a more modern device to see our preview on. And while this guy loads, let's talk about what we're going to be building. So we're gonna build basically a very simple form and uh, it's gonna have different uh, elements, of course, first name, last name, and we'll say, uh, you know, uh, let's say is member will be a, a toggle to turn it on and off. And as we go in and the user modifies those fields, what we want to do is we want to save all that content in real time to something called uh, app storage, which is a property wrapper in Swift UI, which allows us to store small amounts of data under the hood. So the first thing we're going to do is create our form. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to first create a navigation view. We're gonna add in a vertical stack. And in our vertical stack here, we are going to create a form like so. And I'm also gonna give this uh, vertical stack here a, a nice title with a modifier of navigation title. And we'll go ahead and say this is called the app storage. And let me go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side to get our preview to get its life together. There we go. And cool, so before we bring in a text field in here, let's bring in our app storage modifier. So uh, rather app storage property wrapper. It's pretty simple. We say at app storage. Now this takes a uh, key of what thing, uh, what key should we use to store the data? Under the hood, for those of you who are familiar, uh, this is using the uh, user defaults uh, kind of concept under the hood to store your data. So we're going to give it a key of, let's say, first name. I will say this is a var first name. And by default, it is an empty string, just like that. So pretty simple. We'll see our errors go away. And now what we can actually do is let's go ahead and create a text field here. We'll say text field. Uh, and if we open up the constructor, we'll see that the uh, first thing in here is a placeholder. So we're going to say first name. And the second parameter here, we can actually pass in our first name as a binding. And as the user goes and you know, taps in here and starts typing stuff, uh, we'll actually start saving it to app storage in real time. Now we can see that uh, you know, the UI updates here in our preview, but what I'm gonna actually do is we're gonna run this in a simulator so we can actually see the fact that uh, we can type in here. Let me go ahead and select an iPhone 12 Pro for my list. Uh, we can type in here, and if we close the app and reopen it, what you'll notice is that the uh, name will be saved. And it's extremely simple to do this. You don't need to do any save calls or any get calls. It's all real time due to SwiftUI's reactive nature. So here our application is starting up. Just bear with it because our simulator loves to be slow when I record videos apparently. 
And what we'll also take a look at is that, you know, not just using text, but doing other things as well. So I'm gonna tap into here and we're gonna type in Tim. And just like that, we are going to close the app here. Let's go back and open it up and we should see Tim in here uh, as we open it up, which in fact we do. So pretty darn cool, pretty trivial to set up. Now let's take this and expand upon those concepts. So let's go ahead and put this whole thing in a section. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a section here with a header. Let's say the header is, we'll say this is details. And inside of here, we're gonna have a text field for first name. We'll also go ahead and have a text field for, uh, let's say last name. We'll need another app storage here with a different key for last name last name and we pass this into our text field as a dollar binding just like that our error should go away uh, let's go ahead and hit resume on our preview to make sure we're getting that new fields as well as the section header looking good now let's use something other than a string so i am going to create another section we'll copy and paste this guy here and inside of this what we're going to go ahead and do is add a toggle but let's see let's call this header uh, let's call this member status and let's go ahead and add a toggle otherwise known as a switch here so we're going to create a uh, toggle and we'll open up the parenthesis for the initializer and it takes in a title and it is on binding the title will say is subscribed and this is on binding once again we can use an app storage property wrapper to pass it in so we're going to go ahead and create another app storage we're going to go ahead and call it is subscriber and instead of this being a string we're going to say is subscriber we're going to have it be a boolean by default it'll be false and in this is on binding we can say dollar is subscribed let's go ahead and hit try again in our preview we should now see our toggle in the second section here if it decides to update which it's not doing um, so let's go ahead and just give this a run and see in our simulator hopefully all right, there is our toggle and we can turn this on and that's a good time for me to plug. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let's go ahead and close our app if we open it up. Now that you guys have subscribed, you will remain a subscriber. Same thing for the last name here. We can go ahead and type in a last name. We'll go with Tim Cook. And if we open it up, boom, we still have Tim Cook and our toggle is enabled. So app storage is pretty great. Um, under the hood, the takeaways are that it's using the concept of user defaults for those of you watching, you know, that are coming from UIKit and Swift and are familiar with it. Uh, a good practice that I'll call out here is don't use strings like this directly. It's kind of brittle and it's prone to, you know, typos. What I recommend you do is create a struct that's global, uh, you know, to your application. We'll call it settings and we'll go ahead and create keys in here. So we'll say things like, first name key and copy and paste this a few times. We'll say last name key. And finally, we'll say here uh, is subscribed key, just like that. And instead of using these strings in here directly, toss these strings into your static uh, constants here. And you can pass in directly settings uh, dot first name key and settings dot last name key and finally settings dot is subscribed key that way you'll make sure you don't have any typos we're all guilty of it i've definitely made really silly typos and i've you know pulled my hair out for two days of why things aren't working only to come out and find that you know i had a weird typo somewhere so that is app storage in a nutshell if you haven't liked the video already make sure to do so help us out with the youtube algorithm if you haven't subscribed yet and you're into Swift iOS, Swift UI, definitely subscribe to stay up to date with daily Swift iOS and Swift UI content. And of course, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, feedback, video suggestions. If you just want to say hi for the YouTube algorithm, I love replying to you guys. I love interacting with each and every one of you. And I reply to every single comment within a few days. So that all said, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.